Welcome. All right, uh, so what I'd like to do is show you how to do a problem like this, where we now have a 0 that looks really, really complicated, right? It's just 3i plus 9. But remember, when we talked about introducing the square root uh, of a 0, we need to always include the positive and the negative. And that's the exact same thing when we have an imaginary. We had to include the positive and negative. And if our 0 was in the form of a complex number, um, or even as a binomial with a, with a square root of number, we had to include the conjugate of that number. So by looking at this, a lot of students would look at this and say, oh, well, why don't I make the conjugate you know, 3i minus 9? But remember, we get i from i equals the square root of negative 1. So i is going to be your plus or minus. Right now, my i is still positive. So that's not going to be my conjugate. The conjugate of this is going to be a negative 3i plus 9. All right. So remember, it's the i that's the plus or minus, or the square root of the number that's plus or minus. So that's just very important for you to understand um, when looking at this. Now, the other thing I would probably like to uh, do is just probably rewrite these as 9 plus 3i and 9 minus 3i. And that makes it more look like, oh, there's how I see the conjugate, plus or minus. Just make sure you're having a positive and your negative for your imaginary part of your complex number, not the other part. OK? All right, so now what we need to do is write these as zeros. And a lot of students will make the mistake, and they'll just say, well, 9 plus 3i then equals 0, and 9 minus 3i equals 0, because they don't want to think about them any other way. But these are not your two factors. Remember, we have to go through follow the exact same steps that we followed before. And what that means is set each one of these equal to x. Now what I need to do is subtract them to set them equal to 0. So I'll subtract 9 and then subtract the 3i. So I'll subtract 9 and then I'll add 3i. Okay, So therefore, now I have x minus 9 minus 3i equals 0. And over here, I have x minus 9 plus 3i equals 0. Now I have them as my variable factors. So now, since I have my two factors, I can write these as a product equal to 0. OK. So if you're one of those uh, foil kind of ninjas where you just love to foil and you want to foil all this out, by all means, you may do it that way. I don't have a problem with it. However, I'll say you have to be very, very organized and very detailed, or you're really bound to make a mistake because you're going to have to multiply x times each one of these terms, negative 9 by each one of these terms, and negative 3i times each one of these terms. And I'm telling you, it's going to be very hard to keep track of everything you're doing. So what I like to do is just a little bit of a different method. And what that method is, just by grouping this to take a look at it. So what I notice is these first two terms are exactly the same. So I'm going to group them together. And what's important about grouping them together is I notice that they're exactly the same, so I can write them as a. And then the absolute value of my second term is also the same, so I'll write them as b. And then I look at this and I say, well, what if I had a minus b times a plus b? And if you watched this video right from the beginning, you saw I had this written up here before. Um, so what, when looking at our factoring techniques, what does a minus b times a plus b, what did that represent? And remember, that took us to a squared minus b squared. All right. So now we have this perfect square trinomial. So rather than have to factor in everything out, I can just multiply this as a perfect square trinomial. And I can just write x minus 9 squared minus 3i squared. And now I think this is a little bit easier to go through. Now, we know x minus 9 squared, that's a binomial squared. Now, I'll multiply it out for you. But we should know that a binomial squared represents a perfect square trinomial, right? So remember, you square the last two terms. And then you're going to double the middle term. And that will be your middle value. But let me show you real quick. So if I did x minus 9 times x minus 9, that's x squared minus 9x minus 9x. Uh, plus 81. So therefore, you get x squared minus 18x plus 81. See? Told you. Mul multiply the last term, double the second. So therefore, I have x squared minus 18x plus 81. Now we need to multiply um, 3i squared. 
So we have 3i squared. Well, in that case, remember, what that's going to take us to is a 9i squared. You've got to make sure you distribute that square to both of those terms. So we have 9i squared. Well, remember, 9i squared is 9 times negative 1, which equals a negative 9. Well, so therefore, we have um, a minus a negative 9. Well, minus a negative 9 is just going to be double positive here. So therefore, my final function value, remember this all still equals 0. Therefore, I have f of x equals x squared minus 18x plus 90. And that's our final function value. Thanks.